The start to this new league year has been crazy. And I mean, the craziness started before the new league year even began. It started even before the legal tampering period of free agency began. And it started even before the official free agency began. It's just been an ongoing thing for like these past seven days. It has been crazy with big signings, big trades, big all of this. And we've been trying to keep up with everything. And it's been a lot. It's been fun, but it's been a lot. And the Ravens have been part of it too. Of course, with them stepping way out of their comfort zone and signing a, a young player in his prime who didn't play for the Ravens, an outside player, and Marcus Williams to, to a big, big money significant deal. Like, that's not very Raven like. They don't do that type of stuff. Now, the, the, Moses, the Morgan Moses deal, that, that's a Ravens deal. The, uh, the Michael Pierce deal, that's a Ravens deal as well. And we still appreciate that they were making these moves. This is Darius Smith when that was like, oh, that's a, I guess that's, that was a Ravens deal, too, because it was a cheaper deal. It uh, wasn't market value. and <laughs> It wasn't market value. That's what Darius Smith said. I'm out <laughs> doing this. But anyway, um, if I take you back a little bit, uh, we talked about uh, m months ago how we felt like the Ravens just this offseason, they really needed to change a lot with their philosophy. Uh, a lot needed to just be different if they were going to have some significant success. And I still do stand by that. Uh, I've still been talking about that. I talked about how they, should, they need to be quality over quantity. Uh, I talked about how they just, just how they approach the offseason in general. It just needs to be a, a lot different. Uh, I talked about how they need to stop. And again, in my opinion, they need to stop wanting to keep every single last draft pick and rack up on draft pick traffic traffic no it's okay to come off come off of some of those but my, my, my thing with them in the offseason is that I just felt like they needed to be more aggressive you do not have to reach the level of Ram style aggressive because I feel like with a lot of Ravens fans when you talk about the Ravens being more aggressive the first thing they think about is the Rams and I can understand why but it's like with Ravens fans they they think to an extreme Usually it's an extreme negative. Uh, we were in a space yesterday and Skeptigo brought out such a great point. And, and it's so true. Ravens fans have been conditioned to think that the Ravens really going all in for a player, really getting those significant players in their primes, really getting those key different difference makers. Ravens fans have been conditioned to think that it's going to be a bad thing, that it's not going to work out, that that player is going to get hurt, that that player is not worth it. Oh, what about the salary cap? The Ravens fans have been so conditioned to think the worst and think so negative when it comes to acquiring significant talent to really make a difference on the roster. And I think Ravens fans have been thinking that way because it seems as if the front office has sort of operated that way. They, they, they will have a lot of draft picks. They'll sign some players now. Don't get me wrong. They'll sign some players, um, but they don't really make those. They don't, they don't really get the big difference makers like that, like that for the significant money. And you know you can't get huge difference makers at every single position. You know that, well, unless you're the Rams. The Rams could do it. But you know, you know you can't really do it at every single position. But just doing it more. Just really getting after it. Because right now, like, the Ravens, they stepped out of their comfort zone this offseason. They did some, some things where it's like, oh, okay, Ravens. Oh, I see. Well, mainly the Marcus Williams deal. The rest of the deal, they were pretty Raven-like. Um, but they got to do more. They got to play catch-up now. Ravens got to play catch-up now. Because it was looking like, and we know their, their roster, even with all the guys that they got coming back, yeah, they're going to be straight. They're going to be straight. And I expect them to be in the playoff, even though, hey, you know, Joe Burrow and them Bengals, they were working on the offensive line, and they still got a whole draft to do, too. Uh, you know, the Browns, they just got Deshaun Watson, and even if he gets suspended for however long, he'll be back, and he'll have some games against the Ravens. Uh, and then the Steelers, yeah, they got Mitch Trubisky, but you know Steelers, they always messing around. But I don't expect them to do anything significant right here, right now, but it's still early in the offseason, so we'll see. But just within their own division, Ravens, they're going to they gonna have a whole lot of work to do. Like a whole lot. Uh, but then you think about outside the division too. Teams are really like showing, hey, no, no, no. We are not messing around. 
We're not taking this patient approach. We're not taking, oh, well, let's wait and see. And, and I hear another thing that I hear a lot from a lot of Ravens fans. Oh, man, y'all y'all want the Ravens to play the short game? Oh, y'all y'all want to win and go all in right here, right now. But what about 10 to 12 years down the road? Why we have this like this thinking to where 10 to 12 years down the road? We're not talking about your personal savings account or something like that. We're not talking about sending your kids to college. No, no, no. We're talking about the Ravens competing for Super Bowls, not just being a competitive team, not just being a team that, oh, well, they tried. They were in a thing of things. Oh, at least they made it to the play. No, 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 no. I, I feel like the goal should be for the Ravens to win Super Bowls. Super Bowls. Not just be around, not just be, oh, well, we, we, we're we here, but we were in the playoff. We made the playoff. No, no, no. The goal is to win. Is to win. The NFL is much different than it used to be. Ra Ravens approach, it, it worked back then. It worked in 2012. It worked back then. It, it, it worked in 2000. Well, it was a different approach back in 2000, but their approach is not with the current times. And that's one of the philosophies that I talked about I felt needed to change big time. Their approach, it should be different. They got to get with the times. One of those philosophies that I feel should change is the way that they run their offense. Now, last year, it looked like it was starting to change, but I think that was because it was really, they were forced to change it due to injuries. They lost all their running backs. The offensive line was banged up. They're like, oh, we got to pass heavy. We can't run the ball for nothing. We got to pass heavy. Our running game is Lamar Jackson. And, I mean, you really look at the past couple of years, it, Lamar Jackson has always been a Ravens run game as long as he's been here. He has been – like I, I saw uh, one of my guys, I think it was um, Time to Fly. He put it on Twitter. He put up the numbers when – he put up the Ravens' rushing numbers, and Ravens have obviously been one of the best rushing teams in the league over the past couple of years. I mean, if you put all the years Lamar Jackson's been here together and been starting, they've been the number one rushing team, I believe. But then he put up the numbers with Lamar Jackson rushing, then he put up the numbers without Lamar Jackson rushing. He took away Lamar Jackson's rushing yards. And then it was like, oh, okay. All right, well, <laughs> well are they that great of a rushing team? But... You can't take away Lamar Jackson's rushing yards. But the point in that is that Lamar Jack that, that just increases Lamar Jackson's value. Because a lot of people have been saying, they make the jokes about him being RB1. A lot of outside teams and some inside fans too, they make the joke about Lamar Jackson being running back one. But in all actuality, the Ravens ask him with how much he runs and how much he contributes to the run game. Especially a lot of, a lot of these runs are designed. And that's a part of the philosophy I would love for them to change too. Take away a lot of them designed runs. If Lamar takes off... Let him take off. Those would be some of the best takeoffs anyway. When he decides, all right, you know what, I'm out. But Ravens, they, they, they run him. They treat him like he's QB1, and he's got to be RB1 too. he got to be the running back one too. Because they, they, they run him so much. It's so many designs. There's so many, oh my goodness, there's so many And some of them are just so cringy They come at the worst times And it, it seems like, it's like when all else fails This is another part of the philosophy change that we talked about Again, this is nothing new But it seems a lot of times when all else fails With, uh, with the offense They're like, alright Lamar, just, just run We'll do a design run And this is why, again, a lot of us have been saying Hey, go all in Like, Look, look at the past couple of Super Bowl winners and look at the people who have really been like in in the thick of things till the very end. We look at the Rams. Oh, you know their approach. You know their approach is a let's get it. We we going for it all the time, and they stick with that. That's them. Forget those draft picks, as you all know. They go all in. And look at the, look. By golly gee, they won a Super Bowl that way. And they were just in the Super Bowl a couple years back, even though they, they weren't supposed to be there. Now, the whole little pass interference thing. But they won it this year. And then with the Bengals, with the Bengals is different because the Bengals, they did, uh, well, the Bengals, they changed their approach too now. Because the Bengals, they, it was a mix of a couple of things. One is something that you don't want the Ravens to go through because one was the Bengals, they would be losing, losing, losing. So they get all these super high draft picks. That was one part. But then last year, they were like, hold up. We, we got, wow, we got this special guy in Jamar Chase. But you know what? Let's go out and actually really spend some money in free agent. Like, like let's really spend some money. 
in free agency. And they went out and did that. Boom. Super Bowl. They got to the Super Bowl. And then we go to the previous year, the, the Bucks. The Bucks. And it's like with the Bucks, I, f- I feel like I don't hear people talk about this enough. The Bucks went all in to build a roster and get a Super Bowl. They signed Tom Brady. Of course, you know, you signing Tom Brady, you signing the referees, and you signing the NFL, you signing the league too. So you got a little. So, but still, they signed Tom Brady. They went, you know what? We got some real good. We got Mike Evans. We got Chris Godwin. Let's get Antonio Brown too. Come on, bring him. You, oh, you know what? Let's trade for Rob Gronkowski. Bring him. You know what? Let's get for for net too. Bring them. They still went all in with, and there was other guys too, but they still went all in with building that roster. You see, look at them now with Brady coming back. They lost a couple of guys, but they like, you know what? Let's let's trade for one of the better guards in the league from the Patriots. I don't know what Brady got. Well, he obviously got something on the Patriots because he was there for the longest, so he got plenty on them. He said, "Give me Shaq Loss. Give me him. I, I give me him. Give me him now." So it's like. These guys, these teams, and then you can go to the Chiefs too. Chiefs, they, they, these dudes just signed Juju. They still got Tyreek Hill. They still got Travis Kelsey. They still got McCole Harbour. They still signed Juju. And I know as much as you, you're a Ravens fan, that's fine. You probably like, oh, Juju, sorry. No, he's not. And, and Chiefs are always looking to get better, especially on offense. They're always looking to sign playmakers. If somebody comes available, Chiefs are always looking at them. Always, every time, never fails. Ever. They always like, and y'all know too. Anytime you see a significant player released, uh, they they are free agent. Chiefs always, oh, hey, we interested. And a lot of times they try to make a move. And that's on defense too now. They look for them playmakers on defense. Like they really try to build up the offense, but they look for significant playmakers on defense as well. So, but but when you look at that, you look at the guys, and then look at the Bills too. Look at the Bills. The Bills. Signed Josh Allen. They brought in Stephon. They, they, they just they they all that stuff about oh man, if you sign a quarterback to a long term deal, then you're not going to be able to build around them. That's garbage. That's false. That is not true. That's not true. Because look, jo- Josh Allen, he he don't he doesn't he have a big deal? Yeah, he does. I, I think so. These dudes just signed Von Miller to the what the the, the Joe Flacco contract, six years, one hundred twenty mil. He's 32 years old, got a 60, 120 mil contract. And I know he's not going to get the full 120 mil, but it's still a lot of money. Still a lot of money. And the Bills stay continuing to build up that roster around Josh Allen. Bills roster is nice. They did just finally get rid of Cole Beasley. You know they've been wanting to get rid of Cole Beasley for a long time. But they just got rid of Cole Beasley. But you know they're going to replace him with something nice. They, I remember when they signed Emmanuel Sanders. They, of course, they drafted Gabe Davis. And we know about Stephon Diggs. Right? But the Bills, they've been doing this thing too, man. And look where it took them. Look look where it got them. Oh, wow. They, to the uh, Wow, they, they got that far in the playoffs. Wow. A couple times too, man. Past couple years. And it, it did end in heartbreak, but they got there. Somebody got to lose. Everybody can't win every year. But then, then you look at the Raiders. Look at the whole AFC. Oh, my goodness. Look at the whole AFC West. Look what they are doing to go all the, the Broncos. Broncos brought on Russell Wilson. They um they got the pass rusher from the Cowboys. I always forget whether it's Randy Gregory or um Demarcus Lawrence. I think it's Randy Gregory though. Either way, um so they they been doing this or well, they doing their thing this off season. Uh, the Chiefs we talked about them already. The Chargers oh we got a Joey Bosa. So it's like they have a quality pass rusher who has been producing. You know what? Let's get another one. Let's get another one. They will go out and get Khalil Mack. Sign Mike Williams to his huge deal. Like, and they, they are really taking significant advantage of Justin Herbert being on his rookie deal. They really taking significant advantage. It's too late for the Ravens to do that. that, that that's, that's long gone. Lamar, boom, 23 mil right, right, up, right, right now. Right now. And now Lamar Jackson probably looking. He, you know, not even probably looking. You know he's looking at that Deshaun Watson contract. Like, ooh, fully guaranteed. Ooh, fully guaranteed. <laughs> Lamar Jackson's going to be like, don't talk to me. Don't talk to me unless that's where you start. But anyway, um, so they going in. And then the Raiders. Raiders bring on Chandler Jones for 17 mil per. They just signed Max Crosby. Look, look at that. See, this is what I'm talking about. You see teams, they have quality already. 
They have qual- they had Max Crosby. They just signed him to that big deal. They said, you know what? No, bring in more quality. Bring in more high quality. Chandler Jones, 17 mil per. Brought him on, men on a big deal too. Got rid of Yannick Ngakwe, but brought in Chandler Jones. Then they're like, oh, they're getting ready to pay Derek Carr too, by the way. But now they're bringing in uh, Devontae Adams. It's like, man. What, like, and they got, they got some decent receivers now. And they got Darren Waller, but they're like, no, 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 no. We are going to keep trying to add more high-quality players because we're trying to win. And that's what I'm talking about. That's why I feel like the Ravens are behind. They're behind. And it's like, it's crazy how behind I feel like they are because – they actually did step out of their comfort zone a little bit this offseason. But right now, it's still not enough. Now, I'm not saying, oh, man, the offseason is over. Oh, that's terrible. But the Ravens got to step up. They got to step up in a major, 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 major way because they are far behind right now. A lot of Ravens fans, when you think about, when, when you talk about them adding more quality players to the team, like we talk about adding a quality wide receiver to the team. That's a conversation that we've had a lot of times. And I, I've been saying I feel like they're going to do it through the draft this year. But even if they did it through like a, a guy that was like that, whether it be trade, whether it's, uh, well, free agency, uh, they could do some stuff there. But whether it be trade, if they acquired a guy who is like that, like really like that. And it could be a rookie too now. But either way, and some people say, oh, whoa, what about Bateman? What about Hollywood? Yeah, we have quality guys already. Why not add more? Why not add more? A lot of Ravens fans just want to settle. They, they, don't, they, want, they don't want everybody's job to be made easier. That's something that we talked about earlier this offseason, too. Make everybody's job easier. Make Lamar Jackson's job easier. Build up the offensive line. Make Hollywood's job easier. Have other significant wide receivers. Make Rashad Bateman's job easier. Have other significant wide receivers. Make Mark Andrews' job easier. Have other significant tight ends and wide receivers and pass catchers. Make JKs. Make Gus Edwards. Make all of their jobs easier from having other building up the offensive line. Defense. Get an interior pass rusher. Make Patrick Queen's job easier. Get another linebacker, make Patrick Queen's job easier. Have an interior pass rush and make the cornerbacks, the secondary, the linebacker's job easier. Have a pass rush. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It, the, the job should be to make everybody's job easier. How do you do that? By making the opponent's job harder. 